In today's video, 10 things that I wish I knew when I first started cycling and 10 things that I think can help you guys on your cycling journey. Just a quick disclaimer, this video has more than 10 points in it, but I wanted a nice round number for the YouTube title. Stick around to the end to see what number I get up to. G'day and welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. Let's get into it. So point number one is this. Buy the best bike that you can afford, but not the best bike that is out there. When you first start cycling, you might not know if you're going to love it. Give yourself a bike that you can grow into and then grow out of and upgrade. If you buy the cheapest thing in the shop, you might be left thinking, ah, I can't possibly enjoy this because I wish I bought something better. And if you buy the most expensive thing, you're not gonna give yourself anything to grow into once your ability improves. Someone once said to me that the price you spend on a product is forgotten long before the enjoyment that you have using it. It's really important to apply this to buying your first bike. By buying a bike that sits right in the middle at a good range, it gives you an aspirational product that you can enjoy for at least a few years. And it can also give you something that you're gonna perform really, really well on while you're learning to ride a road bike. It's not about how fancy the bike you have is, it's about how well you pedal it. Get yourself something that you're gonna enjoy when you first start riding and you'll find that you've made a really good decision. So this leads me to point number two. Point number two is this, get to know the guys and girls at your local bike shop, treat them with respect and have them respect you in return. If you rock up to your local bike shop, the first people you're gonna meet are most likely the first people in the bike industry you're going to know. By treating them well and by being a great loyal customer, you're gonna find that you build a good friendship, you build a good relationship and your experience of cycling is gonna profit from that. Cycling is an incredibly community focused sport and you really wanna get to know the guys and girls within the industry so that in future you become a part of that community. Whether you're going up to their shop ride on a weekend, whether you're gonna race for the club that they're affiliated with, or if you just want good service from a bike shop that really looks after its customers, it's gotta start within you. By walking in there and spending a bit of money, taking some time to get to know them, and then eventually joining them on a shop ride or two, you'll find that you meet a great group of people, you build a great community, and your experience of cycling really, really grows. The other important thing about supporting your local bike shop is that you'll then always have a shop nearby that you can access if it's the day before you go on a trip and you need to find out how how you get your pedals off your bike or you need your chain replaced or something like this. By supporting your local bike shop instead of buying online, you're gonna find that the bike shop is always there and you'll never have an issue when you actually need a solution. Okay, my next point is this. Carry all your spares as if you are riding by yourself and know how to use them. This means learning how to change a flat tire before you're out on the road. It means learning how to fix a broken chain. And it also means bringing enough food to get you around an entire ride without needing to rely on anyone else. By carrying all your spares and being as self-sufficient as possible, it's going to mean that even if you're with a bunch and something goes wrong, you've got the ability to fix it, you've got the parts to fix it, and you're always going to get invited back on the ride with your friends and no one's gonna be angry at you. There's nothing worse than needing to rely on other people on your bunch ride to fix your flat tire or provide you with food if you've bombed. This leads me to my next point, eating. You might have watched my last video about what pro cyclists eat. I'm gonna put a link to it up here. Obviously, we are not pro cyclists. We're amateur cyclists, and so the workload is different. However, the concept is the same. When you go out and ride your bike, you're burning calories. And when you burn through those calories, it means they need to be replaced in order for you to pedal your bike on the way home. The second half of a ride is always going to be harder than the first. In the first half of your ride, your body is still feeling fresh, whereas in the second, you're on your way home and it's a bit more difficult. It's super important that because of the fact that you're riding long distances on your bike, you've got enough food to fuel you all the way back to your house. If you blow up and run out of food, it's gonna take you longer to get home, it's gonna be more painful, and you're really not gonna enjoy the experience. It's super important to take all the right food with you on a ride and to know how much food you need to eat at any given time to get you through the ride. By knowing how to eat, you're gonna find the experience of cycling is better, you're gonna find your performance on the bike is improved, you're gonna find you're generally more happy while going out and riding on the road. Know how to dress for the weather conditions you're riding in. Cycling is a sport where you're gonna get really, really hot going up hills and you're gonna get really, really cold going down hills. Learning how to dress for the conditions is gonna make a massive improvement to the way that you experience riding a bike. And it's gonna mean that you wanna get on the bike when the weather's bad because you know how to dress for it. By using a layering system, you're gonna find that you can remove the correct amount of layers when you're going up hills so you don't overheat and get too sweaty. And also so that you can rug up on the downhills and so that you don't get too cold. By keeping your core temperature 
is stable, you're gonna find that your many hours of riding on the bike is as enjoyable as possible. Know how to wear a base layer and a wind. Know that when you roll out at sunrise, if it's cold and the sky is clear, that the day is going to get warmer. There's no point rugging up to be super hot when you roll out the door because you'll all of a sudden find that within 20 minutes of riding and warming up, you're gonna be overheating and you're not gonna enjoy your cycling. And the same goes for sunset as well. If you roll out in the afternoon and the sun is setting, you're gonna find the temperature starts to drop. It's very important to start looking at the weather app before you roll out the door and know what's coming so that you can dress appropriately. This takes years and years of practice and experience, but once you get it, it feels really good. Because as they say, there's no bad weather conditions, there's only bad clothing choices. Speaking of weather, it's really important to remember that the worst weather conditions often make for the best rides. Even if you look out the door and it's raining and you think you don't want to ride, go out and ride and come home and decide afterwards if you think it was a good idea or not. Some of the best rides I've had are the ones where I've decided that I didn't want to go, I forced myself out there and I came home feeling like a champion. My next point is this, put safety in front of ego. It's very easy to jump on the bike and see every line on the road as a sprint point and feel like you're Mark Cavendish about to win his 35th Tour de France stage. Cycling is an inherently dangerous sport and no one wants to be taken out by another cyclist taking a risk. When I first started riding, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna blow these guys out of the water with my descending skills. I'm gonna show them how fast I can sprint. I didn't realize at the time that I just looked stupid and no one was impressed. Put your ego behind when you jump on the bike. This means not going for downhill KOMs when you're in a bunch. This means not trying to be as fast as you can off the lights, speeding away and dropping the entire bunch. Show your friends that you know how to ride well, show your friends that you know how to be safe and they're gonna always invite you back on bunch rides and you're also gonna find that you're just a safer rider. No one wants to raid around if you've crashed and need an ambulance to get to the hospital and they definitely don't wanna have to get you a taxi if you've snapped your bike. Put the safety of yourself and others first and make sure that everyone around you gets home to their family nice and safely. Do your efforts while you are riding solo. If you're going out on a bunch ride, unless the point of the bunch ride is to go training, don't be that guy who just goes off the front of the bunch and just blows it all up and frustrates people. You wanna make sure that when you're training, you do it solo, you're gonna find you train more specifically, you train more enjoyably, and then you can show it off to your mates when you're actually racing. If you are training but you're not into racing and you wanna show off your newfound talent on the bike, make sure that you do it with a bunch of people who are on board with it. Just a reminder, these are all mistakes that I've made. I'm not saying these things to be condescending. I've just learned the hard way myself and I would much prefer that you guys don't make the same mistakes that I did. Okay, along the same lines as my last point, I'm gonna say this. Taking uphill KOMs is way more impressive than taking downhill KOMs. It's really fun to race your mates. It's really important to go out on your bike and have a great time. But in my opinion, I think uphill KOMs are the ones to go for. There's less chance of crashing. There's less chance of freaking drivers out and making them hate cyclists. And even more importantly, you're gonna get a benefit from training for an uphill KOM than just letting off the brakes and going hell for leather downhill. Know how to maintain your bike. A clean bike is going to run better, it's gonna feel better, it's gonna go faster, and it's gonna last longer. It's really important to know some basics like when to lube your chain, how to keep your tires pumped up, and how to give it a wash after you come back from a muddy or a dirty ride. It's really important to know how to maintain your bike so that you get the maximum time out of your bike before you need to replace parts. If you wash down your drivetrain after each ride, you're gonna find your chain and your cassette and your chain rings last for a long, long time versus just leaving your bike sitting dirty in the corner. It's a really great feeling to roll out the door every day with a fresh and a clean bike and feel like you're on something that you're really, really proud of. All right, my next point is this. Learn how to ride in a bunch. It's really important when you've got your brand new bike that you know how to ride in a bunch safely. By learning how to ride in a bunch, you're gonna find that you improve your skills over time, you improve your bike handling, your response time gets quicker, and you'll find that when it comes time to go racing and training, that you're better equipped to handle things that come at you. You don't have eyes in the back of your head, but it's very important to be aware of what's going on around you in the bunch. If people are really suffering trying to stay on your wheel, they're not gonna be having a good time and you're gonna look like the culprit for making that happen. It's really important to be respectful in the bunch and to learn how to enjoy cycling with a group of people so that everyone can ride enjoyably, can train well and can get home to their families safely. Another point I wanna make is this. Cycling kit just looks weird. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how fit you are. For most people, cycling kit's just gonna look terrible on you. If you're riding your bike, wear cycling kit. Once you're off your bike, take your cycling kit off. Go and grab a coffee, then head home, get into your regular clothes. And you're gonna find that you look a lot less weird and you feel much more comfortable as a result. 
And my last point, and probably the most important one of this video is this. Cycling is a lifelong sport and it should be seen as such. If you've just gotten your first bike and you're just riding out onto the road for the first time, absorb all the lessons you can, but no worry about needing to learn too quickly. There are some unwritten rules, there are some strange trends, all of these things you're gonna learn about in time. Give yourself the time to learn and grow and improve by getting on your bike every day or three days a week, or even if it's just one day a week, if that's all you've got time for, you're going to continue to improve. Someone said to me when I first started riding on the road, it will take at least 100,000 kilometers before I start to feel real improvements. I'm now at 200 and something thousand kilometers according to Strava over the last 10 years, and I'm finally finding that my ability on the bike is growing. It does take a lot of time, a lot of pedal revolutions, a lot of eating, a lot of sleeping, and a lot of learning before you become a good cyclist. I've learned a lot of things over the last 10 years, and I hope that these things have come through in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will and join me on the journey of cycling further into the future. All right, I'll chat to you guys later. Adeo.